I don't know how the name of Blue but whatever. Um, so, hi people. Um, who's, who's here for the first time ever at TalkJS? Any people? Okay, cool. Uh, me too. Hi. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm going to be talking about generative art with process, processing JS, and don't worry about the big words. We'll talk about them later. Um, so my name, my name is Sherman. Um, ooh, that does not look good. It's supposed to load image. This is why you always host images locally. Don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh no. That's terrible. I'm connected. Anyway. Okay. There we go. Yes. Um, and then our fonts are loading. It's the wrong font. <laughs> OK, doesn't matter. Um, so my name is Sherman. Uh, I'm a front-end web engineer, which means that I have to love JavaScript. Um, I am Malaysian. I just spent the last uh, 18 weeks of my life at the Rika Center in New York City. Uh, a little bit of a plug. For those of you who have not heard of it, it was formerly known as Hacker School. And it is an educational retreat for programmers. So if you want to take time off from working on um, work stuff and you just want to take time to learn things that you're interested about, um, it's a great place, and you work on projects, um, and you meet a lot of cool people. So um, it's also free. Mm, and uh, while I was at the Recurse Center, I discovered this thing called generative art. So I really like programming and art, but I find it really, really hard to consolidate the both of them. Like, how do you create art with programming? Um, so what is this generative art thing? Um, according to Wikipedia, it is art that has been created the use of an autonomous system that is non-human and can independently determine features of an artwork. For example, art that is generated by algorithms. Um, but my sister just calls it screensavers. <laughs> um, if you remember this from the 90s, um, 3D pipes was the bomb. And uh, this is my favorite. Uh, I don't know if you remember the old version, but the old version had straight lines and only had like one or two colors. This is like the Windows 10 version, which is like extra fancy, has the curved lines and everything. It's called Mystify. So if you have Windows 10, please use it. It's awesome. Um, so some, some examples of um, gener generative art that uh, I worked with on processing JS. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this? Um, all of this is running in the browser right now. My presentation is on Reveal.js. Uh, so very screen savory. That's fun. <laughs> um, something like this. And in case you can see it, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a, a niche art where it's interesting enough that you can stare at it for hours, but at the same time, continues to surprise you, but not, it's not too engaging. Um, <laughs> uh, this was inspired by a famous generative artist, programmer, um, Gia Tarbell. And I've included links to some really interesting uh, generative arts. So all of these are generated with the use of algorithms, and it's a little bit different every time you run it. Um, here's more. And this, one, this one's really cool. Um, we have two checkered patterns on, uh, overlaid on top of one another. If you rotate one, it gives you some really trippy effects. So um, cool stuff. So all this is done in processing. Uh, this is also an older processing uh, project, uh, but it's all running on Java applets, so you can't view it, sadly. Um, and you're like, what is processing JS? And to talk about processing JS, we first need to talk about processing, which was a language that was invented to uh, make it easy for people who are not programmers to learn how to code or to do visual things in the context of the visual arts. And it comes with IDE. And when it first came out, um, it runs on Java. And anything that was compiled were Java applets. Um, which is great, but um, that's not how we do things anymore nowadays. And the language looks a lot like Java. Um, if you've ever done anything typed, uh, this should look familiar. So Java looks a lot like JavaScript. So hey, that's great, but with types. Um, and yeah, I'm going to just run this code here to show you what it does. So in processing, you have two major uh, functions that you need to have, set up and draw. And they do exactly what they say. Set up sets things up for you and draw, draws things. Um, and if you've ever done animation, um, drawing draws stuff on every frame. And in a typical animation, you can have like 60 frames per second. So it gets updated every time. Uh, so for example here, whoops, wrong. No, don't save. Um, do, 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 do. And I have here um, running on Webpack. Ooh. Did I not save? No, that's terrible. There, OK. Um, so in this case, set up here, set the canvas size and the stroke, which in this case is setting it to be white, uh, and sets the background color to this nice little chic orange color. And draw just draws a line from the starting point here, x and y, to uh, your mouse x and y. So if you go here and do things, haha, <laughs> lines, yay. 
So it's really simple um, and works really well. Um, so we ran that. And processing JS is the JavaScript part of the processing language. So it compiles processing code into JavaScript. Um, and it uses the browser's Canvas APIs um, because web and because Java applets are no longer supported on Chrome. So sad. Um, so I'm going to do a little quick demo. Whoops. I'm going to do a little quick demo of uh, how you do things in processing. And hopefully, this would explain things. And I realize I'm blocking the screen. Let's see. Oh, OK. Yes, that's right. I was like, oh. But not fair for these people and the people on the sides. All right. Um, so for example, if I don't want to draw a line, let's say I'm just going to move this out to the global scope. Ta-da. And I want to draw a circle uh, centered at x and y. And I want it to be 50 pixels wide and 50, 50 pixels tall. And so where's cool. Where's the origin? Hmm? Where's the origin? Origin yeah. of the circle, uh, centered. No, I mean the whole canvas. Oh, the whole canvas. Um, it's just yeah, top top right. You can set it, you can position it using CSS or yeah, regular styling. Uh, it's all actually just a canvas thing. So if you right click an inspect element, it's a JavaScript canvas. Yeah. Um, but hey, so um, great, we have a ball. It's not really doing much. Let's say I want to move the ball to, and at every frame, I want to update my X position. Velocity. Great, we have it moving. But because it draws over and over again, um, you see the position of the ball before. So in order to do that, I want to update the background at every frame. So hey, we have a moving ball. Great, but it goes over the screen. So not very cool. Um, I'm going to call this velocity x so we can specify that. Um, so in the case of the ball going off the screen, so if x is more than width, and in this case, width is a global variable that is the width of the canvas. So it's, in this case, it's 400 pixels. Um, or x is less than 0, I want to change the velocity. So instead of going uh, one way, it'll go the other way if it hits either end. So velocity x, uh, change direction. And uh, this should make it bounce. And <laughs> we have a bouncing ball. We can also do the same thing for the other way, um, the other for the y direction, and copy paste, copy paste. Always remember to change your variables when you copy and paste. Yeah, yeah. La, 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 la. Thanks. Yes, good call. <laughs> and I have a bouncing ball. So um, this is really nice because it's very intuitive and it's easy to use. So you don't have to do crazy things. Um, like if, you, if you've ever worked with JavaScript Canvas, you realize the API is very, very verbose. So um, that's great. You can you know, put more bouncing balls if you want to do more interesting things. Um, so yeah, that's processing. And you're like, oh, show me you cheated us. This is not in JavaScript. This is processing. We're here for a JavaScript meetup. Um, what, you can also run uh, JavaScript code. So for example, um, And it will leave JavaScript code alone, um, or console.log, whatever. Um, and you, have, you can have a mix of processing and JavaScript, um, which is not totally recommended, but you can if you want to, which is nice. Um, let's see. Yeah, so if you're curious or you want to learn more about generative art, you should check out the galleries that I showed you earlier. And there are also a lot of great resources. Um, there's the processes, processing JS, a lot of syllables. Processing JS learning page, which has examples of how to do things. It also handles mouse interactions, so you can build really cool games with processing. Um, documentation is fantastic, and there's online editors and also courses on how to do things in processing. So yeah, if you're ever curious about uh, you know generative art, you should come and talk to me afterwards. Or if you have questions, you can ask them now because we have time. Yeah. Any question. So just know, right? Did, did you say that the result is not deterministic every time you run it? Um, it depends. So like in this case, it, it is because I didn't include any randomness. But um, for some of the art that I've done, for example, like this one, um, it's non-deterministic because I place things randomly and it grows at different rates and things like that. And it has a different color every time you run it. Oh, most times, oh no, it's purple again. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of generative art has um, 
randomness added to it to make it more interesting, like how screensavers have to be slightly random. Yeah. <coughs> Any questions? What's yes. <laughs> uh, you chose processing JS, but uh, we all know that there are a lot of animation like the uh, snap, uh, canvas, SVG, whatever. What makes you choose processing JS? Ah, that's such a great question because like, I actually prepared a question before this and I was like, oh, why use. I was like, just in case. <laughs> uh, so I guess it really depends on how much control you want over things. Uh, the reason why I like processing is because it, the API is really simple and it comes built in with a lot of useful tools. So for example, if you're working with, um, let's say the Canvas API, and if you have, and most of, when you're reading images, you have things like, um, they come in in RGB colors, and if you want to change modes, it's really difficult. But processing comes in with a lot of really nice features. For example, if you want to change mode to like HSV, you don't have to do the math yourself. All of this is built in. Um, you also have things like, um, there are only, there's only one way to um, draw ellipses in Canvas, and in processing, it gives you tools like, oh, if I want to center my element at um, the first two parameters, I can. If I want to center it at the corner, uh, sorry, put the corner of the ellipse at this coordinates, I can. So it's really convenient and allows you to not worry too much about the details and a low-level implementation of things. Um, because previously, I was working with the JavaScript Canvas API, and it's just like, oh, it's little things, context, blah, blah, blah. Um, and processing wraps around that very nicely. Yeah. Good question. Question? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. I only prepared one emergency question. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where was it again that you did this? Um, I'm glad you asked. Um, I was do I was doing this thing called the Recurse Center. Um, if you guys have time, you should check it out. If anybody is a programmer and if you like programming with other people, um, it's a project-based self-directed retreat. And it's based in New York City. It's free. Um, and people come together and work on very different things. So we have people who are front-end engineers and people who are like more hardware people. Yeah. Are you going to do it here? Um, I, wish, I wish there was one in Singapore. As far as I know, like, the only people who um, do it, you're talking about the center, not processing art. Uh, processing, are you? Yeah, 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 you should do it here. Um, I don't know. Anybody want to run it? Like, I would. I would Participate. <laughs> I don't know if I want to run it. Program or just walk in anytime or just walk out. Um, there are batches, so there's a start date and an end date, and batches overlap, and it runs all year long. So, yeah, would we'll totally recommend. It's funded hmm? by the city. Um, it's not. It's free. The way they fund themselves is by um, they help you find jobs after the program ends, and they partner up with companies. If companies hire you, they pay um, the recruit center a small fee for your. So they also work as a recruitment thing, but there's no pressure whatsoever to do things. Yeah, if you're curious about it, you should come talk to me about it. Awesome place. Yeah. More questions? Cool, awesome. Yeah. Thanks, All right, thank you.